Hey guys, how you doing? I hope the lighting doesn't bother you. In New York, it's 12, I'm sorry, New York, it's 2.30 a.m. New York, it's 2.30 a.m. In Michigan, it's 2.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's 2.30 a.m. Now, in Europe, in Australia, I believe it's afternoon and evening. So guys, welcome. I can't be too loud. My neighbor's asleep. I don't want to be a distraction to them. So do me a favor, folks. Good to see you, everybody. Nicole, welcome to the channel if you're new here. The regular is welcome. Andrew, good to see you. Andrew's got a <clears throat> site where he writes articles exposing Islam. So Andrew, feel free to share the link with people. Now, folks, please, you know the routine. This is a class. Treat this as Bible college or seminary. And trust and pray the Holy Spirit will show up and teach not me and i pray i'm not self-deceived or self-deluded i'm not a heretic that i truly belong to the holy spirit and i'm the servant of the holy spirit and his instrument may the holy spirit come to the forefront and he teach and if he's pleased use me to glorify the lord jesus christ bless you so be prayed up pray and share the link on your social media platforms hit the like button Remember, we're not monetized and times i'm told by people they can't find my streams it seems to me we may be shadow banned so if you believe god is using this youtube channel using me in the ministry then be a blessing share it on your social media platforms invite folks hit the like button thirdly once class begins please we don't need people to pontificate we're not going to go into side tangent tangents side issues debates or make it our own agenda. We're going to focus. We want the Holy Spirit to teach. We are disciples and students of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to focus, all right? So good to see you. Now, Andrew stays up just as much as I do because you'll find him all different hours of the day on different YouTube channels exposing Islam. Susan, good to see you, sister. May the Lord Jesus bless you, your family, your children for his glory. Yeah, let me see the Holy Spirit. So, folks, it's pretty late for people in America, but that's okay. I decided to do this late stream because there may be a chance I won't be able to stream all day Thursday. I may be busy, occupied. For some of you, it's already Thursday. So I decided to do it now. So let's begin in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to show up to help me to recall the facts perfectly. And one thing we must strive to do, being slaves of the truth because the father is the truth the lord jesus christ the father's heart his son is the truth the holy spirit is called the spirit of truth and the bible is god's perfectly revealed truth perfectly preserved and god commands us to be servants of the truth love the truth proclaim the truth and may god save us from lying from bearing false witness from slandering from distortion to present the facts clearly, even if those facts hurt us. So I try my best to represent Islam as accurately as possible because I feel that if you want to show the world that Islam is evil, the Quran is filth, Muhammad is filthy, burning in hell under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, the tool of the devil, just present the facts of Islam. We cannot lie. We don't need to lie. Just present Islam as it is and people who have eyes to see and ears to hear, those <clears throat> created in the image of God, will see how filthy, wicked, immoral, and repulsive Islam is. So pray for me as I lead us in prayer. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. <clears throat> he descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. And he ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. We believe this with perfect, absolute certainty. These are absolute facts that have happened and facts that will happen. Our God lives. Father, so we watch the Lord of my God and say, Lord Jesus Christ. From thence, from there he shall come. To judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church. 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages, in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> Yehovah Rapha, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, grant me the health I need to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and serve the church. <clears throat> grant my throat perfect health and life and vigor. <clears throat> my lungs, my chest, my heart, my arteries, perfect life from the Lord and giver of life, the Holy Spirit of the Father and the Son of the Lord Jesus Christ. And save me from any satanic, demonic attacks against my health. <clears throat> Protect me from Satan causing <clears throat> any injury to me so that my health won't be used to cause me to stumble. Prevent me from glorifying you, Father, from glorifying you, Lord Jesus, from glorifying you, Holy Spirit. And I pray that for all of us. Feed us the holy flesh of Jesus Christ. Give us the precious blood of Jesus Christ for our food, for our nourishment, for our healing, our medicine, for salvation, redemption, protection, and do that for our loved ones. Do that for my daughters, Abba Father, Lord Jesus, Son of God, Holy Spirit, even their mother. Strengthen my ability, perfect my ability, recall scriptures perfectly, to re not only recall them, but to interpret them correctly, and to recall all the facts related to Islam, related to science, medicine, history, archaeology, Perfectly, please, Father, please, Lord Jesus, please, Holy Spirit, save me from error, stammering, confusion. Save me <clears throat> from being confused and befuddled. Save us, shield us from Satan, rebuke Satan, Father, rebuke Satan, Lord Jesus, rebuke Satan, Holy Spirit, and his attacks and his temptations and his children. Muzzle these dogs, teach them the fear of the Lord Jesus Christ, and prevent us from shaming the Lord Jesus Christ, from sinning against the Lord in our anger. May our anger and our zeal be righteous and sanctified by the Spirit and never dishonor the Lord Jesus or blaspheme the Lord Jesus or disown the Lord Jesus or betray the Lord Jesus. Control and guard our tongues and our mouths and the words of our tongues and our mouths. Cleanse in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, that no wicked, idolatrous, blasphemous word will ever come out of our tongues. And do not let us fall into any scandal and prostitute ourselves for the fame and the fortune and the money of the world. Please, Father. Please, Son of God, Lord Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit. And again, I ask, strengthen my throat. And make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants, Abba, Father. Of your servants, Lord Jesus. Of your servants, Holy Spirit. May I disappear. May the Lord Jesus shine in and through us all. Beatify us with the beauty of Jesus Christ. The holiness of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love and compassion and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Abba, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, by your authority. Holy Spirit. Eternal Spirit of the Father and the Son. I pray I'm not a distraction to my neighbors and I'm not too loud. Bless the internet connection, the other visual qualities, and have your way. Take over the ministries, the session, our lives, our possessions. Take over the lives of my daughters, their mother, our loved ones, Abba Father. We give them to you, to you, Lord Jesus, to you, Holy Spirit. We need you, Father. We need you, Lord Jesus. We need you, Holy Spirit. Illuminate our hearts and minds with wisdom and knowledge from the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Cleanse us in the blood of my God and save the Lord Jesus Christ. Yahweh Rapha, Yahweh Rapha, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> to eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. All right. Guys, welcome. Like I said, I know it's late for many, but it should be early for others in different parts of the world. I'm going to talk about how wicked, vile, immoral, unjust, <clears throat> satanic Islam truly is. By focusing on <clears throat> particular statements found in what Muslims who are Sunni, the Sunni sect deem to be Sahih narrations. That's a term. Sahih means sound. Take a moment. Look in the description box. I just published a post to go with this session. And I decided, let me do a session revolving around these hadiths. The link to the post that I published earlier is there in the description box. And the title is, Allah tortures Jews and Christians in place of Muslims. Now, this is a theme I have addressed and raised 
in previous sessions, in debates with Muslims, in previous articles or rebuttals over the years. So this is nothing new. David Wood has mentioned these hadiths, Al Fadi, even Jay Smith, Rob Christian, our brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, Adam Seeker, Christian Prince. But I decided to take the hadiths that I have used over the years and some new narrations that I gathered and culled from this book, and I'll talk about it in a minute, and post them all in one place to make it accessible. So you don't have to look for them. You don't have to buy the books or spend time researching. It's all there in one place. All the materials that I produce by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, all the sessions, they're yours free of charge. But here are some conditions. Seek the face of the Holy Spirit to help you understand what you see, hear, and read. Absorb the facts correctly and perfectly. Make them second nature and share the information accurately and do not charge. If I'm giving, giving it to you free because the Lord commands me to do so, you pass it on to others freely. And after all, it's my material that I'm giving you permission to use. So translate them, clip them, upload them. So that said... If you want to see how satanic and evil Islam is, <clears throat> I mean, I've shown you how evil it is, and others have, how immoral and wicked, demonic and filthy, disgusting Islam is. But let me give you another example. According <clears throat> to statements that Sunni Muslims believe have been authentically <clears throat> derived from Muhammad, statements attributed to Muhammad that Sunni Muslims believe derived from the historical Muhammad and have been preserved, Allah will ransom, Allah will redeem, <clears throat> Allah will save Muslims from being tortured, punished in hell because of their sins by offering a Jew or a Christian in the place of a Muslim and sacrificing a Jew or a Christian in the place of a Muslim. So a Jew and Christian or a Christian will be tortured by Allah in hell in place of Muslims so that the Jew or the Christian becomes the ransom for a Muslim, for the sins of a Muslim, so that Muslim doesn't have to be tortured in hell because of his sins. Because Allah will torture a Jew or a Christian for the sins committed by Muslims in hell forever. So I try to repeat it more than once, and I like to do that. I, I repeat myself at least two to three times so people can get it. So you understand what we're about to see, what I'm about to show you? In other words, Satan has taken the biblical teaching of substitutionary atonement, where either an animal dies in the place of the sinners to provide a temporary covering for sin until the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, offered his life freely, voluntarily, out of his love for his creation as a sacrifice for our sins, being our substitute and our punishment so God can now spare us if we turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan has taken that concept, and turn it on its head by having Muhammad claim the Jews and the Christians will be the vicarious sacrifice, the substitutionary atonement to atone for the sins of wicked, filthy, vile Muhammadans, jihadis, woman raping, woman whoring, child enslaving jihadis. Okay? So did you understand what I'm going to be sharing in this session? And it won't be a long session. It will be as long as the Holy Spirit wants it to be. So if you got it, we're going to go into the facts. And all the narrations are there in the in the post. Here it is. Let me give it to you. Here it is. It's in the description box, folks. But here's the link. The name of the title, the title Allah tortures Jews and Christians in place of Muslims. So we guys ready? Suzanne, everyone else ready? Let's see, maybe I need something to drink. Maybe some water. Everyone ready? And I'm wearing Bruce Lee, by the way. You know when I wear Bruce Lee, someone's going to get hurt spiritually. Spiritual Jeet Kune Do. Someone's going to get beat, spiritually speaking. A beat down, a spiritual beat down by the power of the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> we guys ready? <clears throat> so let me get my water and we begin. And may I not spill on my computer. May the Lord preserve the computer. Yeah. All right. Let's begin. Now, a praise report to prepare you. A praise report. I got this message on Facebook Messenger a few days ago. 
I'm not going to mention the brother's name, but I want to read this praise report. May God destroy our pride, our arrogance, our ego. And I pray that especially for me because I am the most egotistical. May God save me from that. May God destroy jealousy, envy, gossip, slander from us and make us truly humble and teachable and filled with the Holy Spirit to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read this praise report. This was sent to me on Monday, <clears throat> 4.54 p.m. Hi, Sam. I just wanted to thank you for helping me find my way to our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I found your channel back in 2020 when I was first becoming Christian. And it was a tremendous help to me, especially as I was struggling with early traditions of the church. This has really blessed me. You also helped get my best friend out of seven-day Adventism, which I owe you a lot for. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Lord Jesus. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Let me read that again. You've also helped get my best friend out of Seventh-day Adventism, which I owe you a lot for. Not me, the Holy Spirit. Everything good comes from the Spirit. We give the Spirit the glory. Thanks to your videos and articles, I was guided into the Orthodox Church. I know the Orthodox is going to love this. But please, all of you of apostolic traditions, you should rejoice and glorify the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit when anyone goes back to the ancient apostolic churches. I know everyone who's Orthodox wants everyone to be Orthodox, but that's okay. Right? At least they're returning to an apostolic church. And pray the Spirit keeps guiding them. Right? So let me read it to you. Thanks to your videos and articles, I was guided into the Orthodox Church. I was baptized this January, and I will be getting married this July. Wow. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. None of these are something I would have ever even considered a few years ago, right? And you've been a big help in turning me away from my former Gnosticism. He was a Gnostic to the way of our Lord and Savior. This thank you is long overdue, and I hope you're doing well, brother. Mm -hmm. May God grant you many years, and may our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. So I wanted to share that with you guys. All right? So anyway, are we ready? Gibson, the Orthodox claim to be the Orthodox Catholic Church. The Coptic call themselves the Coptic Orthodox Catholic Church. The Assyrian Church of these is called the Assyrian Apostolic Catholicos Church. All of them are Catholic because the word Catholic, Catholicos, means universal. And it's used by Ignatius. So you're not saying anything. And don't start World War III, sir. Uh, if you're a Roman Catholic, I love you. I love the Roman Catholic Church. But respect the other apostolic traditions. And don't start a debate in my comment section. I'm going to send you packing. I want everyone to feel comfortable. Even Protestant, Trinitarian, Evangelicals. And may the Spirit use me to show them there's more to the truth and that the Spirit will put a fire in their hearts to want to seek the fullness of the truth. All right? So everyone there? Now let's begin. Let's focus. Ready? We ready now to begin? How you doing, Jedediah? Guys, give me the signal that we're ready. And we're going to focus and no debates. And let's respect the other apostolic traditions. And let's be tolerant. This channel is not to divide the apostolic churches. I pray the Spirit will use me to bring true unity, anchored on the truth of Scripture, not compromise for the praise of men. And also be used to love Protestant, Evangelical, Trinitarian, brothers and sisters of Lord Jesus Christ, who need to come to the fullness of the truth, but still show that they have affirmed enough of the truth that they are brothers and sisters of Lord Jesus Christ. That's my position. You don't like my position? That's okay. You can agree, disagree with me, but don't start trouble on my channel. So let's begin. What does Islam teach? And by the way, I mentioned this book. Let me lift up the book again for you to see. If you're a serious student of Islam and you're seeking to be used by the triune God, the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, to destroy Islam, destroy Muhammad, who's already destroyed and burning in hell, in order to be used by the Lord Jesus Christ to be the light that shines in the hearts of Muslims so they can escape Muhammad too and come to know the only true God revealed the Lord Jesus Christ, you get, need to get this book. 
okay you need to get this book anthropomorphism in islam the challenge of traditionalism okay 71350 by livnat holtzman livnat holtzman i believe this is a woman she's a bona fide scholar of islam and she has done us a favor by translating certain hadiths in english from the arabic sources that are not accessible found online so this is a book you need okay for if you're a serious student of islam and want to learn about the controversies the debates the infighting the killing <clears throat> that permeates islamic history due to the debates regarding whether allah is an embodied being or when the quran refers to allah's body parts are these metaphors and so on and so forth now let's begin ready let's go holy spirit take over i'm just going to be reading the hadiths and i may have time for a few questions let's see all right this is all from my post if you want the hadiths i quote them and if they're online i link to the online versions this comes from <clears throat> 110 hadith qudsi sacred hadith translated by sayyid masood masood al hasan revision and commentaries by ibrahim m kunna and it's published by daru salam publishers and distributors and it's pages 19 to 20 and there are two online versions of this that i link to so you can read these hadiths online for free and i give you the links in the post superiority of the believers and the oneness of allah and the punishment of the Jews and Christians. Okay. Superiority. Why those who believe in the oneness of Allah are superior to anyone else. And how Allah will punish Jews and Christians. Okay. Hadith Qudsi number 8. Narrated Abu Musa. <clears throat> Allah's messenger said, On the day of resurrection, my ummah nation will be gathered into three groups. One sort will enter paradise without rendering an account of their deeds. Now, this is... Completely contradictory to the Quran, but if you're a Sunni Muslim, you'll try to harmonize these statements. According to various hadiths attributed to Muhammad, accepted by Sunnis, there will be 70,000 followers of Muhammad who will enter paradise straight away without being judged. This is what it's saying here. Now here the number is not shown, but other hadiths say 70,000. Without having to give an account for anything they've done, they'll simply enter. Now, guys, fact check me. I praise the Lord Jesus that he's enabled me to recall facts. But again, I'm still imperfect and I make mistakes. Fact check me, 70,000. That's the number. Okay, so one group's going to enter and they won't even be judged. They won't even be asked for what they've done, what they've said. Another sort will be reckoned an easy account and admitted into paradise. So they will be judged, but it'll be easy for them. Now, the third, third group, okay, this is very important. Yet another sort will come bearing on their backs heaps of sins like great mountains. That's how many sins they'll have. A mountain of sins on their back that weigh them down. Allah will ask the angels, though he knows best about them, who are these people? They will reply, they are humble slaves of yours. He, Allah, will say, unload that mountain of sins on each of them. Unload the sins from them and put the same over the Jews and Christians. Then let the humble slaves get into paradise by virtue of my mercy. This hadith is sound, sahih, and mentioned in Mustadrat of Hakim. So what will Allah do? He's going to take the mountains of sins of this particular Muslim group, every single one of them. He's going to take their sins and load those sins, unleash those sins on Jews and Christians. So Jews and Christians will bear their sins and be tortured in hell for the sins of the Muslims. You got it? <clears throat> no, those 70,000 are not sinless, Gibson. They're Muslims. Well, those sinful are receiving favor from Allah to enter paradise without having to give an account. Okay, did you guys get that? That's the first narration. I can't move on if you're not getting it, folks. <clears throat> so with me, class has begun. I need feedback. I made the spirit teach. With me, 
Everyone got it? Now let's read some other narrations. Okay. This comes from Riyadh Salihin, the Meadows of the Righteous, which compiled by Imam Abu Zakaria Yahya bin Sharaf and Nawawi at Dimashqi. And Nawawi, he wrote a commentary in Sahih Muslim, Shar Sahih Muslim. And he died when he was young. This comes from the Book of Miscellany, chapter 51 on hope. Okay. Number 432, Abu Musa al Ashari. Ashari or Ashari, and notice all these hadiths come from him, Abu Musa, reported, Messenger of Allah, when I say all these, the one I read previously in this one, and in Sai Muslim, we're going to read a hadith attributed to Abu Huraira. Again, may the Holy Spirit correct me from mistakes and save me from error. And correct me on the spot in Jesus' name. Abu Musa al-Ashari reported, Messenger of Allah said, on the day of resurrection, Allah will deliver to every Muslim, a Jew or a Christian, and say, so he's going to deliver in the place of a Muslim, a Jew or Christian, and then Allah will say, this is your ransom from hellfire. Wait. Allah ransoms Muslims, redeems Muslims, substitutes Muslims by sacrificing Jews and Christians, by giving up Jews and Christians in the place of Muslims, so Jews and Christians are sacrificed in hell for their sins? So the Jews and Christians are their substitutionary atonement? Another narration is, Messenger Allah said, there will come there would come people amongst the Muslims on day of resurrection with sins as heavy as a mountain, and Allah would forgive them. Here it is. Let me post that part so you can see it. Okay? Here it is. Focus here. Watch here. Read it. Allah will deliver to every Muslim and Jew... To every Muslim, a Jew or a Christian, and say, this is your ransom from hellfire. But I thought in Islam, there is no substitutionary atonement, vicarious sacrifice. Vicarious sacrifice means a sacrifice where that thing is suffering in your place. On your behalf for your sake, vicariously. Okay, let's continue. Okay, This comes from the translation of the meanings of summarized Sahih Muslim, Arabic, English. Compiled by Al Hafiz Zakiwuddin Abdul Azim Al Mundiri, published by Darul Salam Publishers Distributors, first edition, 2000, volume two, volume two, book 62, the book of repentance on Allah's great mercy, pages 1033 to 1034. Chapter 20, disbelievers, watch what the chapter heading is. Disbelievers are sent to hell as sacrifice to the Muslims. This is not my translation of the Arabic. It's a Muslim translation. Okay, watch here. What's the chapter heading? And how did the Muslim translate the Arabic? Chapter 20, disbelievers are sent to hell as sacrifice to the Muslims. Okay, now let's read. Number 1937, Abu Musa again narrated the messenger of Allah said, when it is the day of resurrection, Allah will deliver every Muslim, a Jew or Christian, and say, that is your sacrifice from hellfire. Hmm. And who rendered it that way? The Muslim did, not me. Yep. I'm trying to look for the hadith that I thought was cited from Abu Huraira. But what I see here, it is all... Abu Burda or Abu Musa? Let me just double check real quickly. I want to see if Huraira's here. No Huraira. Interesting. Hmm. Yep, no Abu Huraira. See? It's Abu Musa and Abu Burda. So let's read it. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for saving me from mistakes. We try to be as accurate as possible. Okay, here you go. Now, this is a different translation of Sahih Muslim. The chapter subheading, chapter 8, the throwing of non-believers in hellfire for believers as divine grace and mercy. Okay, did you guys catch it? Allah will show mercy. Allah will show grace, favor. Okay. To Muslims by torturing, by sacrificing, by damning Jews and Christians in hell. 
And that's how Allah shows his love, favor, and mercy to Muslims. Look how much I love you. I want to torture a Jew and Christian for your sins in hell. Chapter 8. Throwing of non-believers in hellfire for believers as divine grace and mercy. Now let's read the Hadith. Hadith number 6665. From Sahih Muslim Book 37. So this is Sahih Muslim Book 37, number 6665. And I give you the link where you can read it online. Abu Musa reported that Allah's Messenger said, when it will be the day of resurrection, Allah would deliver to every Muslim a Jew or a Christian and say, this is your rescue from hellfire. So I'm going to rescue you by torturing them in your place. Sahih Muslim Book 37. Now this number is freaky. Number 6666, 6666. We know the number of the beast is 666. And Muhammad is one of those beasts, Antichrist, and his father is Satan. So here it's quadruple six, 6666. Six, six, six. Let's read. Okay, let's read. Focus, guys. Abu Burda reported on the authority of his father, that Allah's apostle said, no Muslim would die, but Allah would admit in his stead, in his place, in his stead, a Jew or Christian in hellfire. Omar bin Abdul Aziz took an oath by one besides whom there is no God but he. Thrice that his father had narrated that to him from Allah's messenger. Okay, so let me pull that part again. Here you go. 6666. No Muslim would die, but Allah would admit in his stead a Jew or Christian in hellfire. Okay? Now let's go to 6668. Same Muslim, book 37, 6668. Abu Burda reported Allah's messenger saying, There would come people amongst the Muslims on the day of resurrection with as heavy sins as the mountain. And Allah would forgive them and it place in their stead the Jews and Christians. As far as I think, Abu Raub said, I do not know as to who is in doubt. Abu Burda said, I narrated it to Omar bin Abdul Aziz, whereupon he said, was it your father who narrated it to you from Allah's apostle? So Omar is asking Abu Burda, did your father tell you this hadith? And did he tell you he received it from Muhammad? He heard it from Muhammad? I said, yes. Okay, so far are you with me? Because we're going to read from this book now. Live Not Holtzman, where she quotes variations of this seven, same hadith from Abu Musa. Are you ready? We're going to read from here. Because she quotes narrations in which we find Allah laughing as he tells the Muslims who end up recognizing him that he will spare them hell by torturing Jews and Christians in their place. So let's read how sick, sadistic, how evil Muhammad and his God happen to be. Okay, here it goes. This comes from pages 33, 34 of her book. Okay. 33, 34 of her book, right? The section, section one, the narrator and the narrative, a literary analysis of Ahadith as Sifat. So let me read. Let me show you for me. Let me read just here so you can see it. So you don't think I'm making it up. Here it is. Let me show it to you. It's all my paper, my post. Here it is. It's at the bottom. It's going to be right here at the bottom. You see it? You see it? The messenger of God said, when the day of resurrection comes, God will bring all nations together in the same plateau. And when he sees fit, okay, to, let me read it so you can see with your own eyes. Now it's going to be on the top right. Top right. Can you see it? See it? When he sees fit to separate between his creatures, he will present to each nation the idols that they used to worship. Okay? Let me see. Let me move it this way a little bit. 
Okay, no, it's this way. I got to move it this way. Sorry. Because I'm trying to figure out how I'm okay. Now you see it? All right. Let me just do this. So you know I'm not making it up. All right. We try to be Zionical and as honest as possible. There you go. The people will follow their idols until they will be pushed into the fire. Then our Lord, the blessed and exalted, will come. Right? Will come. So you're reading it. To us as we stand in a high place and say, who are you? And we will say, we are the Muslims. He will say, what are you waiting for? They, i.e. the Muslims, will say, we are waiting for our Lord, the blessed and exalted. He will say, will you recognize him when you see him? They will say yes. He will say, how will you recognize him when you've never seen him? And they will say he has no equal. Then he will be revealed to them laughing. And I'm going to underline that so you can see it. So Allah is going to appear laughing. <laughs> They're going to see Allah laugh in visible form. And say, rejoice, O you Muslims, for I've already replaced each one of you destined to go to hell. So you're destined to go to hell, but I've replaced each one of you with a Jew or a Christian. And Allah laughs about it. <laughs> Let me un underline that so you can see it. Let me under let me get a pen and underline it. Okay. okay. Let me underline it so you can see it. Okay. So you know I'm not making it up. Now, for those of you hearing it for the first time, what's your reaction? Okay, I want to underline it so you can see. Okay. Tell me your reaction as I read this. Okay, here. You see the underline? Let's see if you see. You see it? You see it? Then he will be revealed to them laughing and say, Rejoice, O you Muslims, for I've already replaced each one of you destined to go to hell with a Jew or a Christian. There you go. See? Not making it up. I'm not lying. Let's see where this hadith comes from. Here it is, 59. Here's the source. Al-Ajuri Kitab Al-Sharia, page 279. Al-Ajuri Kitab Al-Sharia, page 79. Okay? There it is. And also, it's hadith number 608. Also, Ibn Hanbal, Ahmed Ibn Hanbal, Musnad, volume 32, pages 422 to 24. Hadith number 19654, Ibn Khuzayma, Kitab al Tawheed, pages 5, 577 to 578, Hadith number 340. All of the details are in that post. I gave you the article. Al Darimi, Darimi, Rad, page 92, Hadith 180. And then she quotes a French source, Gimarit, Dieu el Limoges de la Home, page 268. Okay? So I got some more. I got some more. All right. Again, from her book, page 36. Page 36 uh, from her book. And I'm going to underline the part so you can see it. Okay. It's a long one, but I'm going to underline it. Okay, here you go. Let me just underline it. So people don't think, Sam, you're lying. You're making stuff up, Sam. All right, here it is, page 36. Let me show you. Okay, here it is, to the right, right here. You see it? Let's see. You see I got underlined? Raise your heads up because he each, because for each and every one of you, I mark a substitute who is either a Jew or a Christian, to be sent instead of you to hell. See? I'm going to read the entirety, but I want you to see the underline part. I'm not making it up. Okay, Lana, let me read it. Okay, you ready? Focus, guys. Everyone focus. Muhammad Abdul, everyone focus. Let me read it. I'm going to read the whole hadith. Then go, Lord bless you. When the day of resurrection arrives, the idols that each nation used to worship in this world will be presented before them. Each nation will approach the idol that they used to worship in this world, and only the monotheist, Ahl al tawhid will remain. Someone will then say to them, what are you waiting for? 
when everyone else has already gone? And they will answer, we have a Lord whom we used to worship in the material world, but we have never seen him. They will be asked, will you know him when you see him? You can recognize him? Okay. They will say, yes. They will be asked, so how will you recognize him when you've never seen him? They will answer, because there's nothing similar to him. Suddenly, the curtain will be drawn in front of them, and they will see God, the mighty and powerful. Immediately, they'll prostrate themselves on the ground. All but a group of people who want to prostrate themselves, but will be unable to do so because their backs will be stuck and erect like cattle's horns. This scene will be exactly as described in the Quranic verse on the day when the dread event unfolds and they are told to prostrate themselves, they will be unable. Chapter 68, verse 72. And here's the part again. So God will say to them, raise your head, raise your heads up, those who are prostrated. Because for each and every one of you, I marked a substitute, notice language, substitute, who is either a Jew or a Christian, to be sent instead of you to hell. Now I'm going to give you where this hadith comes from. God, logic, apologetics, you getting it? Here it is. You're going to see the other line in a minute. Let me see. Seeing the other line? Let's see. You see the online part? There it goes. Let me see. Hold on one second. I'm going to get it. Okay, I got to get it right. Sorry. I got to get it right. You see it? There it is. You see it on the online part? Okay, you got it. All right. Now, a few more from her. But now, where did she quote this from, though? Okay, let's see where she quoted this from. Okay. Al Ajuri Kitab Al Sharia, page 278, hadith number 607. For a different version, see Al Ajuri Kitab Al Tasdiq, page 80. Al Tabrani Al Mujam Al Kabir, Al Mujam Al Kabir, volume 9, page 418. So she's giving you the references where you can get this. We got a few more, folks. We got a few more. And I want to show you how some Muslims try to get around this, right? So you can be thoroughly equipped, prepared, and that's it. You got, you got meat. Now, this comes from pages 43, 44 of the same volume, 43, 44. So you can see it. Okay. 43, 44. Right? It's right here, 43, 44. I quote it. So I'm going to read now from my post. You ready? I'm going to read from my post. Okay. According to his avowal, Sayyid ibn Abi Burda, this is the son, right, of <clears throat> Abi Burda, the man who narrated this hadith, accompanied his father and the delegation to the Caliph al Walid. As Ahmed ibn Hanbal remarked, Sayyid never denied, okay, Sayyid never denied that Amar asked his father to swear on the authenticity of the hadith that he recounted to him. Following the material in Ahmed ibn Hanbal's Musnad and Muslim Sahih, Ibn Asakir, Asakir added that Sayyid never denied nor affirmed this incident. So he didn't deny it, he didn't affirm it. He just went silent because people were troubled by this narration. They were shocked. Wait, wait, wait. Jews and Christians are going to be tortured for our sins. So I was going to punish Jews and Christians for their sins and ours. So they're being punished for two groups of sins, their own and others. Hmm. According to Sayyid, after completing his business with Umar, Abu Burda, that's Sayyid's father, who narrated the Hadith, and Abu Burda claimed he got it from his father, who got it from Muhammad, awakened Sayyid in the middle of the night and led through the streets of Damascus. They arrived at Umar's house. Let me see something. Hmm. Let him say, I missed him. I got to go to him. They arrived at Umar's house. Okay. which was situated between the vegetable market and cheese market and knocked on the gate of the house. The gatekeeper informed Abu Burda that Omar had already retired to bed, but Abu Burda insisted on informing Omar that he was waiting for him at the gate. Soon after, permission was granted to granted for Abu Burda and his son entered his house. Right? Let me just see if I made any typos because I may have to check this out. Soon after, permission was granted for Abu Burda and his son. Yeah, to enter his house. 
Yep, so there's two typos. Is something wrong, Abu Burda? Asked Amar, whose sleep was interrupted. Everything is fine, answered Abu Burda. What is it that you want? Asked Omar. Now watch. Abu Burda explained, I finished my business, but I remembered a hadith that my father had told me. And here it is. The messenger of God said, when people will be gathered for judgment day, a Jew or a Christian will be brought. And a voice will say, O believer, this is the sacrifice that will redeem you from hell. Omar asked, did you hear it from your father? Abu Burda confirmed this. Now let me underline it so you can see it. Okay. So note, the Jew or Christian is a sacrifice to redeem ransom Muslims from hell, even though they deserve to go there for their sins. Here it is. Okay. Let's see if you see it. I underlined it. Do you see it? Let's see. Let's see, man. You got to see it. Yep, there it goes. Let's see. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to figure out the camera. So wait. Yep, there it goes. You see? Underlined it. Oh, believer, this is a sacrifice that will redeem you from hell. Do you see it? Right? You got it? All right. You saw it, right? Okay. I didn't make it up. Now, right, Muhammad Abdul, please don't go on a tangent and preach your agenda about Jews and Christians, believe Messiah, getting saved. Please, buddy, focus, dude. Learn and focus. If you know this, that's okay. Just don't be a distraction. Okay, now, where is this quoted from? Where did she get this from? Let's see. Here it is. Where did she get this from? Is she making it up out of thin air? Here it is, her note. Ibn Asakir, 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 Tarikh Dimashq, volume 26, page 47, the biography of Abu Burda. Okay, one more from her, and we're going to see how the Muslims try to get away from this. This comes from page 45, and she's quoting, this is page 45, she's quoting Ibn Asakir, Tarikh Dimashq, volume 4, pages 301 to 302. Okay, let's read. Let's read it. Page 45. And I'm going to have to underline so you can see it. And guys, what more do you want? But now I'm going to go into how Muslims try to get around this. Okay. Let me get there. Let me just unwrite it before that. Okay. I was sitting at Amr ibn Abdul Aziz. Aziz says, when suddenly Abu Burda, the son of Abu Musa, came in and told, Omar bin Abdul Aziz, that he once heard his father tell the following hadith on the authority of the Prophet, who said, In the day of resurrection, the Jew and the Christian will be brought, and a voice will say, O Muslim, this is the sacrifice that will redeem you from hell. First look at it. See what I got underlined? You see it? O oh, Muslim, this is a sacrifice that will redeem you from hell. So it's a sacrifice and it's ransom, redemption. Okay? Omar bin Abdul Aziz said to Abu Burda, Allah, there is no God but him. Did you hear your father tell this hadith on the authority of the messenger of God? Abu Burda said, Allah, there is no God but him. My father indeed told me this hadith and he in his turn heard it from the messenger of God. Can't deny it. Qudama said, I then saw Omar bin Abdul Aziz prostrate himself in adoration three times. So what did Umar do to thank Allah that he's going to torture a Jew and Christian for his filthy, wicked sins? He then prostrate three times thanking Allah. Oh, thank you, Allah, that you're going to torture, burn, <clears throat> humiliate, disgrace, inflict unbearable punishment on a Jew or Christian for my filthy sins. There you go. This is Islam for you guys. But you know what some Muslims will say? Uh, now we're going to get into the rebuttal part. You know what some Muslims will say? Brother, brother, this is Ahad. Muhammad Abdul, you know I'm going to block you, sir. The reason I'm going to block you 
because you just proved to me you were here to preach your agenda, to do your own thing, disrespecting me and the others by not focusing. Because had you focused, you would have seen the cover of the book and the name of the book. But you just proved to me you're not paying attention. Now you need to get the hell out of here. Don't come back. Okay? Thank you for proving you're a troll, right? Who want people to pay attention to you because you want to make a name for yourself and it's about your agenda. Get the hell out of here. Don't come here again. So had you been paying attention, you would have seen the book. But no, you were busy running your mouth, barking in the comment section, trying to be pious and spiritual and get people to think that you're very knowledgeable. Okay? So there you go. See, guys? Disrespect. Come here doing their own thing because they don't want to learn. But thank you for the rest of you for paying attention. Now, how do the Muslims get around this? They'll say, well, these hadiths are ahad hadiths. Ahad. The word ahad means one of. Now, the Muslims will classify hadiths in two categories. Mutawatir, tawatur, and ahad. Now, let me have two Sunni Muslims from the opposite end of the spectrum, explaining mm -hmm. the difference between mutawatir hadith and ahad hadith, and why some Sunnis will say, well, it's an ahad hadith, I don't need to accept it. Are you guys ready? I'm going to now play clips from two Sunni Muslims from opposite end of the spectrum. Shabir Ali, who questions everything, throws everyone under the bus, throws his God and his prophet and his scholars under the bus, Pretty soon he's going to be doing the same thing to the Quran because he's embarrassed and humiliated by what the Sunni sources say. And therefore, he has to redefine Islam and edit Islam to his liking. This is why a lot of Sunni Muslims dislike him and think he's a sellout and he's a wolf. But now let's hear it. This comes from Let the Quran Speak, November 12, 2021. Q&A, where can I find a book of Mutawatir Hadith? So he's answering the question. A lady sent a question. Can I find a book that has all the mutawatir hadith? The hadith deemed mutawatir. Now he explains. At the 1 minute 39 second mark, he's going to explain. Listen, he's going to tell you what a mutawatir hadith is and versus a ha ahad hadith. Watch your enrich is not. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe I should start by explaining for those who are not so savvy as our questioner. Mm -hmm. uh, as what, to, is what is mutawatir? Yes. yes. So uh, a mutawatir in Arabic means uh, something like, um, you know, something that is continuous. Mm. Uh, but it um, it has the more more of a sense here of, of something that is uh, repeated through multiple lines Listen. of transmission. So if you think multiple of the Prophet lines. Muhammad, peace be upon him, saying something, his followers running away with that statement and teaching it to their followers, the next generation, and then to the next generation and so on. If, uh, you know, you know the shampoo commercial that says if two persons told two persons and each told two persons. I don't know this commercial. This is an old <laughs> one, you know. So, you know, um, so in any case, it, it multiplies, mm -hmm. right? So uh, if the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, having many followers, um, if he said something important, you would expect that many of his followers will report that to the next generation mm -hmm. and then to the next generation and so on. And it will become a multiply attested hadith. It'll be mutawatir. It'll, it'll, it, you know, it, it, one would approach it and have such a confidence that nobody has uh, invented this or changed it from what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said. Unfortunately, what we have uh, in, in the world of hadith narr narratives is that most of what we come Listen. across, uh, even the ones which are called sahih, which means simply authentic, are not mutawatir. They're more of the category that hadith scholars uh, describe with the word ahad, which, mm. which means uh, singly attested narratives, even though they might be, be related by two or three persons. But they didn't reach that level that Muslim scholars could have such absolute confidence in them. So, they're... Did you understand what the difference ahad is? Ahad is either one single narrator or two or three, but that's it. So if you have only two or three narrators narrating a hadith, it's called ahad, and it can be questionable. But a mutawatir is a mass transmitted narration where many companions of Muhammad heard it from Muhammad, and then they pass it on to many of their followers and so on, right? 
ahad is either one person heard it from Muhammad and passed it on, or two or three. Did you catch the difference now? You guys caught the difference? Before I move on? Uh, ahad is either one narrator or two or three. Narrated it. Mutawatir, tawatur, is where you have mass transmission. Many transmitters. So many of Muhammad's companions passed it on to many of their followers and it became mass transmission transmitted. Mass transmission. Mutawatir. And there are Muslims who say the Mutawatir hadith are very few. They're not many. And they are on the same level of authority as the Quran. They're absolutely factual. You can't deny them. Ahad, you can question them. Okay, now listen. Look at look what he's going to say. Okay? I call them Ahad as, a, as in contradistinction to Mutawatir. Uh, now, the uh, so what exactly What's is the Mutawatir? It, it must, it, like, how many people do you need to have hmm, transmitting this? Yeah. And and nobody has come up with a, a precise number. Hmm. But, you hear but it? the one thing that... Nobody has come up with a price, precise number. Listen to what these scholars are admitting. No one can tell you how many people must have heard it from Muhammad and pass it on to qualify as Mutawatir. There's a debate. Five, six, seven, eight. They're not even decided. Do you hear it? This is Islam for you. Do you hear it? They don't even agree. How many must you have for it to be considered mutawatir? Five, six, seven who heard it from Muhammad? More, less? They're not agreed. Do you hear it? They can't even agree on that. This is Islam, this junk, this filth, this satanic religion. Right? But let's continue. That people agree on is that it must be such a large number of persons so that you can have confidence that nobody made a mistake in this because so many people are narrating the same thing. Now, it so happens that among these 322 hadiths uh, that are deemed to be mutawatir by this right scholar, first of all, there are repetitions. I okay, so he says one scholar compiled a PDF file online where he listed 322 mutawatir hadith. But many of them are repeats. So they're not really 322 different multiply attested narrations because among them are, it's the same hadith repeated more than once. So he's trying to say how many there is. But I want you to hear what he said because according to Shibrali, even if it's Mutawatir, he'll question it because Shibrali doesn't care. He doesn't care. Even if it's Mutawatir, if it's illogical to him, irrational, Silly, stupid, or makes Muhammad look evil, immoral, he'll question it. He doesn't care. But now let me give you the opposite end of the spectrum. A Salafi Muslim scholar named Sheikh Asim al-Hakim. What does he say to those who say, well, if it's an Ahad hadith, Ahad hadith, then we don't have to accept it. What does he say to them? Here it is. Let me get you the link, as I gave you for Shibrali. Look what he says. You ready? Look what he says. This comes from Just Alayman, Sheikh Asim Al Hakim, November 5, 2021. What is Hadith Al Ahad or Ahad? And why do many Sheikh say we should ignore them? Look what he says, folks. Look what he says. Listen carefully. Here it is. Here's the link. Let's listen. Rashad from Tunisia. My question is, what is uh, Hadith Ahad? And why many uh, shayukh say we, we should ignore them? Jaz Listen. Jazakum. <clears throat> uh, Rashad from Tunisia, he says, what is Hadith Al-Ahad? This is a technical terminology known to the scholars in terms of defining the Hadith. What is the Hadith? And they classify it to Hadith um, Mutawatir, a uh, hadith that was narrated by Bukhari and Muslim, which is one of the highest levels after the Mutawatir, and a hadith that is Mustafidah, that is so widely spread but doesn't reach the level of Mutawatir. And then they come to a hadith that is known What's as that? Ahad. Ahad comes from one, which means that the uh, levels and the stages of narrators, each stage and, and, and level has 
not reach the level of kawachor, of having so many people in one level. So if the hadith was narrated by one companion, they consider this to be ahad. Though it is so famously Listen. accepted and well known, yet they label it as ahad. It's a technical terminology. Now, late comers late and comers. people of innovation like Al Mu'tazila. Did you catch it? People of innovation, Ahl al Bida, Mu'tazila. What do they say about Ahad? Listen, because he's a staunch Salafi Muslim. Salafi Muslims will not, if they're honest and not lying to you, <clears throat> doing taqiyah, will they'll accept Ahad hadith if it's Sahih. The other Muslims who are not Salafi, who are Ashari or Maturidi, Sufis like Hamza Yusuf, will say an Ahad Hadith, even if it's sound, if it's Ahad, it's not necessarily binding, but if it's Mutwatir, it's impossible that it's forged and it's on the level of the Quran. What does he say to those Muslims like Hamza Yusuf? Look what he says. And those liberals... Liberal. And those secularists and those who want to discredit the Sunnah as a whole, they use this technical terminology mm -hmm. to tarnish the reputation of the Sunnah. So they come and say, no, 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 we will take only Al Mutawatir because Quran is Mutawatir. We will accept the hadith that are Mutawatir. What do you mean by that? The Jajid will accept the Quran because it's Mutawatir, mass transmitted, and the hadiths that are Mutawatir. Those are binding, infallible. And he's saying, what do you mean by that? Listen, I love this guy. He's actually now become my favorite Muslim sheikh because I use him to destroy Islam for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. The mutawatir hadiths are a handful. So few. So, so yeah, a had is not necessarily indicating that it is true and gives us the certain knowledge of its authenticity it might be it might not be and this is not the way of the salaf jared this is not the way of the salaf meaning the first three generations of muslims muhammad's companions their followers and their followers after them do you hear what he said this ahad classification questioning it that's not what muhammad his companions did their followers and their followers after them the sahaba the tabi'in, the tabi tabi'in. This is an innovation. Did you hear it? So I'm trying to educate you by the power of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit educates me and uses me to educate you, I want you to be aware of these lies and these tricks of the Muslims. Because a while back, when I was in good terms with James White, he was debating a very notorious deceiver, because he's like his prophet, Abdullah Kunda, that there are no mediators in Islam and Allah does not accept substitution and atonement. When I was in good terms with James White, I sent him the Hadith, but he said, oh, I don't use them because Abdullah Kunda doesn't accept Ahad narrations. And James White let him get away with murder. This is why you'll hardly hear any of us, any of us, even when I was in good terms with James the only time I'd recommend his debates is when he did outstanding job in refuting Muslims on the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Trinity. Because, again, we got to be fair because we're going to answer to the Lord. He's had a lot of great debates where he's demolished people when it comes to the eyewitness nature of the Gospels, the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Trinity. So we got to be honest because we're going to answer to the Lord. We cannot let, let our dislike or disgust of a person to poison us being honest. When he's right, he's right, right? When he's done good, he's done good. We don't throw out the baby with the bathwater, okay? He would not use these hadiths from Muslim against Abdullah Kunda because Abdullah Kunda says, well, I don't accept ahad narrations as authoritative instead of nailing him and exposing him for being a hypocrite. This is why, Take, don't take my word for it. Go out throughout the years, even when I was in good terms with James White. How many times have you heard me or David Wood or Al Fadi, or Christian Prince, or Rob Christian, recommend James White. We hardly recommend him because we don't like his approach and we don't like the fact that he bends over backwards to appease Muslims because he becomes what is known as a useful idiot. 
He let Abdullah Kunda get away with murder, thinking he's doing Christ a favor and he's doing the church a favor. No. I'm trying to give you the best arguments possible by the power of the Holy Spirit, arguments that they cannot refute and also prepare you for their lies, their deceit and trickery. Do not let these Muslims lie to you and say, Ahad is something that's not necessarily binding on us. Don't let them get away with that lie. Okay? Listen to what this man is saying. Listen. The Prophet, the companions, the tabi'een, the tabi'at tabi'een, may Allah have mercy and be pleased with them all. They all accepted hadith al-ahad. What? Wait, 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 let's play that part again. Wait, wait, what, what, what? Let's go a little back again. They all accepted hadith al-ahad. It might be, it might not be. And this is not the way of the Salaf. The Prophet, the companions, the tabi'een, the tabi'at tabi'een, may Allah have mercy and be pleased with them all. They all accepted hadith al-ahad. And to show you that these guys want to only tarnish hmm. the sunnah and discredit it so that they would dismantle Islam from the foundations. Jared, their, game, their aim, and that's Shabra Ali, discredit the sunnah and dismantle it, destroy its foundation. That's what he's doing. He nailed it on the head. To show you, look how he's going to now embarrass them. You go and read the sunnah itself. When the people of Quba were praying Fajr and one man came from the companions and shouted at them that last night a verse was revealed to the Prophet Assam that the Qibla has been transferred and changed from Jerusalem to Mecca, to Listen. the Kaaba. Listen so this. it was 180 degrees. While they were praying, none of them said, okay, this is a one person. Can we implement his narration? which is a hat, or should we wait for five or ten more witnesses to confirm this? No, they immediately acted upon it. When the Prophet used to send messengers, he used to send one person, not a handful of people just to confirm one another, which means that this that? is totally not uh, uh, kosher nor legit. Did you hear it? It's not kosher legit. Did you hear that? Do not let them deceive you. Do, do not let them... Pull a fast one saying, these narrations come from Abu Burda, who claimed he heard his father, he heard from Muhammad. It's Ahad, Ahad, and therefore not binding. Don't let them deceive you, people. This is how you destroy this argument. Now, finally, unless we have a modalist heretic, Janiba, who's going to have to call me and discuss the Trinity versus modalism. I do want you to watch the session I did last night, which we just uploaded the video. If you go to my channel, praise the Lord Jesus for these workers, Prophet Google. I don't mention him enough. Pray for that young man. Pray the Lord Jesus keeps him healthy and saves him from all demonic trials and provide for him. And ask the Lord Jesus to bless his father because his cancer is back. Ask the Lord Jesus to flood that family, to flood his father in the infinite love, joy, and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ and help his father overcome cancer, and it won't be painful. And the Lord Jesus protect Prophet Google because he tirelessly uploads these videos for me because I haven't learned how to do it yet, and he doesn't get paid. His reward is with the Lord Jesus. Pray for him and send him word of thank you and tell him that you're praying for his father and his cancer. These are precious gifts that the Lord Jesus gives the church to help us, right? And may the Lord always put in my heart to honor them and love them for his sake. Now, he uploaded the talk yesterday that I did for God Logic Apologetics, the final in the series of Tawheed, Tawheed Part 6. It's now uploaded to the channel. You have to watch the series, guys. You're missing out on gold because in yesterday's session, which we now uploaded, you'll see it. This is the name of it. It's on my channel now. And when you watch it on my channel, also go to his channel, subscribe and support him because he is allowing me to upload it to my channel. Here's the name of it. Tawheed Exposed Part 6. Mm -hmm. Muhammad sits on Allah's throne. The spirit and the black stone are gods. I documented and I have an article and I posted the articles in the description box of this session.
Tawid exposed part six. Muhammad sits on Allah's throne. The spirit of the black stone are gods. I documented from Muslim narrations that according to a narration that was passed on from Mujahid, Allah will honor Muhammad. Allah will honor Muhammad on the day of judgment by allowing Muhammad to sit on his throne. Allah will enthrone Muhammad on his kursi, his throne. Some say it's actually the footstool, but he'll be seated on the throne as Allah allows Muhammad to intercede. And in one narration in particular, it says Muhammad will be given a throne at the right of Allah. So he'll be enthroned at Allah's right side. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? What does that sound like? And I discussed that, and it's now uploaded. Watch, learn, read, study, and use the information. Here's the article. Here's the article right here. Does that sound familiar? The name of the article is Muhammad's Enthronement and Mediation. Does this sound familiar? According to the interpretation of chapter 17, verse 79 of the Quran, a narration passed on by Mujahid, accepted as part of the creed of Islam by the Hanbalites, the followers of Ahmad ibn Hanbal and his school of Islamic jurisprudence. In fact, I even showed that Muslims came to blows and killed each other over this hadith. Anyone who denied the hadith, right, was attacked viciously by the Hanbalites, these Muslims who followed the Hanbali school of Islamic jurisprudence, Hanbali madhab. They came to blows. They even attacked Tabari and put him on house arrest if anyone denied that this narration is sound and that Allah would actually enthrone Muhammad. You guys, did you hear me or did I put you to sleep? The traditions say Allah will enthrone Muhammad on the kursi, on his throne, on the day of judgment, as he intercedes for Muslims in order to honor Muhammad. And one narration says Muhammad will be enthroned at Allah's right, at the right of Allah. Okay? You want me to read that hadith for you? Where Allah, Muhammad will be seated alongside Allah's right. Can we read it for you? It's in my post. Here it is. So watch, study, learn, absorb, understand, and pass on to destroy this religion. Because the Lord Jesus already destroyed Muhammad in hell. And magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Here it is. Let me read it. Okay. Another nation from Abdullah ibn Salam. From Abdullah ibn Salam, in a long hadith on the Day of Judgment, a seat, kursi, will be placed for the Prophet on the right of Allah. Let me repeat. A seat, a kursi, will be placed for the Prophet on the right of Allah. Al-Hakim narrated in his mustadrak, mustadrak and declared its chain, the chain of this narration, sound, sahi, sound, as confirmed by al the Habi. Did you catch it? Here it is. Let me post it for you. You understand what that means, right? Satan inspired Muhammad and his followers to rob the Lord Jesus Christ, Muhammad's God and destroyer, of his glory and took the functions, the roles, characteristics of our Lord Jesus Christ and applied them to Muhammad in order to have Muhammad replace Jesus in the hearts of Muslims because Muhammad is a son of the devil raised up by Satan and Antichrist to keep people from the true Lord Jesus, falling in love with the real Lord Jesus, because Muhammad has replaced Jesus in the hearts of Muslims. Here it is again. From Abdullah ibn Salam, in a long hadith on the Day of Judgment, a seat, kursi, will be placed for the Prophet on the right of Allah, who narrated this, and is it sound? Here it is, and I'm quoting Sheikh Jib Jibril Fuad Haddad, and I'm going to tell you his story in a minute. He's a renowned Ashari Maturidi Sufi scholar. Here it is. Al Hakim narrated 
it in his mustadrak and declared its chain sound sahih as confirmed by al Zahabi. Two renowned hadith scholars said this chain is sound, it's sahih. Okay? And it's all in that post. Now, let me tell you the story of Sheikh Jibril Fuad Haddad. Now, is that Molus going to call me? Janiba, if you're a Molus and three Trinitarian, call me so we can discuss the Trinity. Let me know you're going to call me or not, because you're not going to hear, hear preach your modalism, which is a perversion of scripture, a satanic doctrine. May the Lord Jesus grant you grace to repent and come to know the true God and love and worship him as he is. Okay, now, Catholics, you're going to get upset. Sheikh Jibril Fuad Haddad used to be a Maronite Catholic. He's from Lebanon, Lebanese. A Maronite Catholic who left the Catholic faith to become a Sunni Muslim. And now is considered one of the leading Sufi practices to Sawuf, Ashari, Maturidi Sunni scholars. He left the real God, the real Father, the real Lord Jesus, Son of God, the real Holy Spirit, for this demon, Muhammad, son of the devil, and all of the Quran, who's Satan. There you go. Folks, if this modalist doesn't call me, we're done. It was short, but to the point, you have the articles and materials. Go and listen to Tawheed Part 6. Tawheed Exposed Part 6. Muhammad on Allah's throne and the Spirit and the Black Stone as gods. Learn these materials. Read these articles rebuttals. Seek the face of the Holy Spirit to help you, to be disciplined, to understand what you see and hear perfectly. Share the facts. They're yours. I'm giving them to you so you can be lions, lionesses, filled with the Holy Spirit to be used by the Spirit to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, destroy all blasphemies, all falsehoods, and take captive every thought for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Muslims need to get saved. And you are the hands and feet of the Holy Spirit, the voice, the mouthpiece of the Holy Spirit. Be used of God to glorify God and get people saved by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of the Father. For the glory of the Son, the Lord Jesus, for the glory of the Holy Spirit, the one true God. In fact, I'll tell you why this is important. I found out a longtime friend of mine has become a full-blown heretic, a wicked, blasphemous son of the devil. Okay? He used to be a Muslim who embraced Christianity and is a Christian rapper. Slowly, I saw a change in him because he has a view of God where God has to be loving in a certain way or he won't accept God. So he ended up becoming a universalist. And he believed that the Bible taught everyone will be saved and there's no hell. I didn't say anything. Just recently, he's gone on the deep end and I called him and I put him in his place. His view of what God can and can cannot be, listen to this, his view of what God can and cannot be and his view of what true love is, has now led him to become a wicked, vile, blasphemer, son of the devil, along the lines of Martian, because he made a post on Facebook saying that Yahweh of the Old Testament is not God, he's evil, because Jesus is the image of the true God, and the Yahweh of the Old Testament does not resemble Jesus, therefore, he's not God, he's evil. Same thing that Martian, his spiritual father, said in the second century. He's gone off the deep end. This is what happens when you make God in your image and tell God what he can and cannot be. This is what happens when you become the judge determining what God can and cannot be and what love can and cannot be. So if that God does it then fit your understanding of what a God can and cannot be and what true love is and isn't, then you're going to either abandon Christianity or pervert the scriptures to such an extent where you're going to say that the God of the Old Testament is evil and Jesus did not come from that God, but he came to save us from that God, which is what Martian did. Let God be true and every man a liar. So I went after him and I scolded him and I showed him he's biblically illiterate. And I said, you're a heretic. You're a son of Satan. 
You're an enemy of the gospel, and I have to oppose you. I'm sorry. Okay? Now, thank God he's not famous, but you'll know him by his post on Facebook. He goes by the name Mars, M-A-R-Z, and you'll know him because of his attacks and blasphemies against Yahweh. And he doesn't know the Bible. He's biblically illiterate. And he's now a son of Satan who needs to be opposed, and you need to expose him. Sad. He left Islam, followed the true God for a while, and now he is twice the son of Satan, twice the son of hell, the son of the devil, because he's more wicked than Muslims. Because he claims to follow Jesus and believes in those parts of the New Testament that agree with his theology and now condemns the Old Testament. Janiba, you got five minutes to call me on Skype if you're a modalist. Do you deny the Trinity, Janiba? Because you're going to call me so we can discuss, or I'm going to have to block you. Do you deny the Trinity? Yes or no? I'm going to call me and have your Bible ready to see if your view of God is biblical. Let's see. If not, we're wrapping it up, folks. Short but to the point, and I hope you learned a lot. And you see how filthy, wicked, vile, satanic Muhammad and his God happen to be. Okay? So let's see if Geneva denies the Trinity and whether she will call me. Yep. No, Geneva is going to get blocked if Geneva is an anti Trinitarian and won't call me on Skype. Come on, Geneva. I'm going to block you if you don't answer. And we're done, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a blessing. We still got a good crowd, 157. Today we had over 250. We're getting our numbers up. The Lord Jesus' will be done. If you want small, his will be done. And give me the grace to be content. All right? Geneva, you got 20 seconds because it doesn't take more than a minute to respond, even though there's a 60-second timeout. You should be able to comment. So I'm going to count 20 down. 20. 19. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. You see? They're tough in the comment section and like to pontificate, but they won't call and defend their position scripturally because they can't. So Geneva, bye-bye. You didn't answer. That means you're an anti-Trinitarian and you're scared to defend your false doctrine. So there you go. Keep listening, but you're not going to pontificate. Now, folks, I hope you're blessed. I may do a stream tomorrow, I may not, I mean Thursday, but again, I appreciate your prayers. If you believe God is using me, and if you believe God has called me full-time ministry, then please partner with me by praying for my daughters and I. Ask your prayer warriors, your churches to pray. The more people pray, the better. Ask the Lord Jesus to grant my daughters and myself divine, miraculous, supernatural, physical safety to protect them, health. Right, <clears throat> and salvation that the Lord Jesus will bring them salvation, that the Lord Jesus will grant me the power to be holy and truly love the Lord Jesus Christ and never shame the Lord, dishonor the Lord, and fall into any scandal. And ask the Lord Jesus, save my daughters from this wicked, adulterous marriage, that He'll be a holy fire consuming this adulterous marriage, this wicked, satanic union, and remove Martin, Simon, Yako from my daughters' lives. So no man will be in their lives and that I'll have them every day, raising them up in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And their mother will repent and be convicted and be just burned with a guilt because she knows she's in adultery. Because I remind her, God hates your marriage. God hates you brought this man into their life and I will not tolerate it. But the Lord Jesus will fight for them. Pray the Lord Jesus will also give me perfect self-control, self-discipline to stay healthy and keep healthy. And if the Lord tarries to see my daughters grow up to be godly women and that I die before anything happens to them in Jesus' name, if the Lord tarries, but may the Lord not tarry in return and clothe us in his righteousness to be ready for his coming. 
And folks, if you feel the Lord is calling me in ministry, pray for the support to stay steady. I don't lose support. People are panicking because of inflation, but may God give us peace and contentment not to fear. So the support stays, not even looking for it to increase. And may God save us from this judgment that we deserve, save unborn children and fight for them. And may we be the voice of the unborn child because abortion is murder and life begins at conception. That's what God says. And God is the one who determines when life begins. May we fight for the unborn children through our prayers and fasting and through our protest legally. For the glory of the Father, Son, the Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Pray the support remains steady. We don't lose support so that the Lord will sustain me and through me, my daughter, so I can provide for them to do this work for the glory of Jesus until the Lord comes. And thank you again. Those of you who support, you know who you are. Your reward is with the Lord. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough. And Lord willing, I may do a session later or Friday. Look for it. Hit the like button. Make these videos go viral. Thousands of thousands. Not a few thousand. Thousands. Because there's a lot of meat by the grace of God's spirit. Take the material. Take them. Upload them. Translate them. Use them for the glory of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Abba, have mercy. Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy. And may I not be loud and a nuisance to my neighbors. Please, may they not be upset with me. May they see Jesus in me and all of us. Lord Jesus, increase in us, in our loved ones, in my daughters and their mothers. Sit and throne upon their hearts and our hearts. Purify, wash, cleanse us in your blood, O Lord Jesus. And keep us in love with you. Save us from Satan, his children, and our own flesh to walk in perfect submission to the Spirit. And come sooner than later, we need you, Son of God. You don't need us, we need you. And give us the power to love you the way you deserve to be loved. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Maranatha. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again, physically and bodily, to judge living and dead. And he is Jehovah, to the glory of God the Father, the love of the Spirit, our Lord, our love, our life. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, take care.